cautionary tale now for pundits and commentators, particularly those of the defend the president right or wrong variety. If the president says something that you plan on defending, it will not always be enough to simply repeat what the president said at a higher volume and with the emphasis on different syllables. If you're going to defend the president's political attacks, make sure you have a vague grasp of what they mean. If there's a reference to a historical event, for example, look it up. Try the Google or an old fangled history book, maybe. Our third story on the countdown, a talking point relaunched by President Bush, ill understood by at least one of his defenders and challenged simply on the facts. It happened when a guest on Hardball, Los Angeles radio host Kevin James, tried to parrot what President Bush said before the Israeli parliament. That possible negotiations with Iran were tantamount to Neville Chamberlain's appeasement of Adolf Hitler in the run-up to World War II. The host, our colleague Chris Matthews, asked one simple question. Let me ask you, what did William, uh, Chamberlain do wrong, Neville Chamberlain do wrong in 1939? Look, uh, what did oh, he do on. wrong? It's, it, all goes, it all goes back to appeasement. No, what it, did he do? Key, well, tell me what he did. It's the key term. It's you the have key to term, answer this Chris. question. He goes, what did no, he do? He goes, it's the same thing. It, it puts it all... It's, well, it's tell t- me what he did. talking about appeasement. And, what did Chamberlain his, do wrong? His, what actions, did, his actions enabled, what did Chamberlain energized, do? legitimized... No, I want you to... No, stop. It's the exact same... I'm not going to continue with this interview unless you answer what that thing is what it, it, did Chamberlain the, do in 39 tell me it, Chris it's the exact same thing all what right did he do in, uh, no. what did he do it, what 38 39 Chris what year what do you want do? it doesn't it's the exact ask, same tell me thing what happened Chris. what did he's Chamberlain talking, he's talking he's talking about appeasement all right what did Chamberlain Chris. do just tell me what he did Kevin what did Chamberlain he, do you didn't like look uh, what did he Cham- do? What Chamberlain did? What Chamberlain did that I? What, what the president was talking about? You just said no, the dude, president what? was talking about. You just said the president was talking about Barack. Look, the no, 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 I want you I to tell me, Mister. The- you're making a reference to the days before our involvement in World War II, when the war in Europe began. I want you to I, tell me no, now, I, as an I, expert, I what did Chamberlain Bush, do wrong? Look, you're not going to box me in here, Chris. President Bush was making that. I'm glad. You I'm don't glad know, the president. Do you? You I'm don't glad know that what, what Neville course, Chamberlain did in Neville here, Chamberlain, you. yeah, he, he was an appeaser, Chris. <laughs> he was an appeaser, do. and it energized, Kevin, and it legitimized. Okay, and, you know, and then I'm sitting here for five minutes asking you to say what the president was referring to in 1938 at Munich. I don't what know. Neville Chamberlain, what the, you don't Chris, know. Thank you. Chris, We're talking him. with people with blank slates what, what, in terms of what history President here. Bush and, and Kevin hey, Chris, apparently are interested in. Excuse me. What they're interested in. Let's bring in the host of Hardball, Chris Matthews. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining Rachel, us tonight. Hi, how are you tonight? Great. Um, amazingly, what we showed there in that clip was only part of the exchange with Kevin James. And you never really did get an answer to your question to him, did you? Well, two dozen times I asked him what he was talking about, and he couldn't tell me. I mean, these words like you know, uh, appeasement and Munich and sellout and cut and run, you've got to be real careful about the historic uh, references. You can't just say things. And the problem with the 30s was not talking to the enemy. It was giving away countries, giving away Czechoslovakia, ultimately having to fight after the Polish invasion. I mean, it was serious business. And, you know, information isn't bad. Talking isn't bad. In fact, I wish everybody had read Mein Kampf a long time before that war. They would have been able to move faster. That is, the thing that's important here is not just that you had a guest who didn't know the historical reference that he was parroting, that he had obviously either been told to say or thought he was supposed to say. There is a real substantive problem with appeasement being this buzzword that's being thrown around without anybody interrogating what appeasement really means. It's become the summary for talking to our enemies, right? That's what you were getting at and trying the, to get him to admit. The whole mindset of the last several years, let's put it that way, since 2000, has been to shut up critics. If you don't don't like a war policy, you get branded with a name. You're unpatriotic. You're a cut and runner. You're an appeaser. You can't argue politics in America anymore. You can't question power because if you question it, you're going to be drummed out of uh, acceptable society. You're going to be called an appeaser. These magic words are used for one purpose, to shut you up so that they can proceed with the policy. And I think that's a real problem. I think I just was at Washington U today, Rachel, and I made the point that uh, in a society like ours, Uh, arguing over policy, arguing over what our role should be in the world, shouldn't be unpatriotic or seen as unpatriotic. In many, most cases, it should be seen as the essence of patriotism, giving a damn about our policy, what it ought to be, arguing, standing up and having a real debate. We didn't have that when we went to war in Iraq. 
You know, some of it's the media's fault. Some of it's just that people are intimidated out of challenging this president and his war policy. Well, and I think Chris, we're better off with a hot debate, I think. Do you think that this is something new? Do you think this is something specific to our current contemporaneous politics that we've got these sort of buzzwords and bumper sticker slogans, whether it's appeasement or fighting them right. over there so we don't fight them over here or they hate our freedom? Any of these, these terms, are they designed to be repeated and not to be interrogated? Well, just look at the way people are basically exterminated or try to be exterminated. Bill Maher makes a comment, which may not have been the right comment, but he was making a point he was trying to make about stand back weaponry compared to people killing themselves. You can argue about the niceties of that. The Dixie Chicks say something about the war, and they shouldn't have said it overseas, but they said it. The shutting up of opposition is critical to running a country in an undemocratic way. Let's put it that way. And so you have buzzwords like appeasers or cut and run, and, and they're used over and over again by the most mindless people. And the trouble with them is they tend to work. The ditto heads can use them. Anybody can use them. And they seem to have the same effect. They cause people to run. They not only, criticism. They not, I think it's not only used as a slur, it's also part of the way they advance the agenda. I mean, part of the way that politicians now talk about things that they want is through slogans that don't necessarily make sense. And maybe that's always been true in American politics. Well, but when it's about war, it feels almost feels almost criminal to me. I don't know. Well, the use of the word WMD, we never heard that phrase, but that became a huge phrase back in the early part of this decade, WMD, because it conflated the idea of, uh, of, the, of uh, the fact that they had chemical and biological weaponry with the idea they had nuclear weaponry. So you didn't have to say nuclear anymore. You just said WMD. Yeah. You could say terrorist as a term that conflated what happened to us on 9-11 with the countries we don't like, like like uh, Saddam Hussein. Conflating terms all the time. That's another trick of this language. I'm not really happy with phrases like homeland security. Hmm. Is there anywhere else we protect besides our homeland? What's wrong with just national defense? Oh, because homeland refers to just part of the area we're defending. I get it. Yeah. You know, some of this language is very foreign, and I think it's used for uh, for bad purposes. Double well, talk. we know that. Double talk. We know that. Chris it's Matthews. shut people up. Chris Matthews, host of Hardball, thanks for taking time Thank to be you. with us. Thank you. It's great to be on, Rachel. Thanks.